Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So uh, three days ago, I posted a video of uh, two feet aquarium. Here you can see it on the screen, the video that I posted, it's up on my channel still. And uh, the viewers liked it. Actually, it was a maintenance video of my tank. I was doing a monthly maintenance of it. And uh, it was just a time lapse. But a lot of people were asking me like, what plants am I using? or uh, what lice am I using, what is in the substrate and etc etc. There were a lot of questions and uh, I was like overwhelmed like how to answer everybody. So I thought of making a video where I can include and tell everybody about what plants am I using in the tank and other questions also I, I will try to answer. So first of all, I would like to mention that it is a low tech uh, planted aquarium. It's a kind of wall stud method aquarium but i've done some tweaking here and there and i've done it in my own style but uh, yeah so it's a low tech tank nothing high tech nothing expensive in it and everybody ha can have such kind of tank in their homes so firstly i would like to tell about what substrates am i using so basically i'm using garden soil from my backyard and uh, a little bit of one as to one vermicompost mixture one part of garden soil one part of vermicompost so i'm using that in my tank as a base layer it serves as the nutritional layer also most of the nutrition most of the uh, growth of the plants the stem plants the root feeders okay those plants are going to take the nutrition from the base layer only and uh, another thing is the second layer is of gravel it's one inch thick almost one inch thick and the purpose of that layer is to provide space for root growth of the plants as uh, the roots cannot grow only in sand or only in the soil beneath. It can be, it can happen, but I didn't want to take any chances. So I included a gravel layer in between. It enhances the empty spaces and helps the root roots to grow. So that is the second layer. And the third layer is of fine sand. Not very fine, but uh, you can find it on Amazon or Flipkart in India where under the name of River Sand. And it's quite cheap considering uh, the quantity and the price. I got almost 5 kg of River Sand for 450 rupees. So it was very cheap. And that is all about substrate. I don't use anything else, no root taps in it or no aquatic soil or no any fancy or other expensive uh, stuff. So. <clears throat> that was the substrate part the second thing and the most asked question was about the plant list that i have in my tank so the list of the plants is rather long it's uh, very I, I would say complicated because i don't actually remember the scientific names of all the plants but i would say that there are a lot of plants in the tanks as you can see in this tank also you will see a lot of greenery there are a lot of plants in it and uh, yeah so i'll try to remember each and every name and i'll tell you so first of all i'll go with the fastest growing plant in the tank that is limnophila uh, sessiliflora i guess i'm pronouncing it right and it's a really fast growing plant and uh, believe me that plant only will make you do the maintenance every week so that is the first plant i'll uh, put up the photos of each and every plant on up on the screen here so you can recognize I'll put a photo from my tank and I'll put a photo from Google search so you can get the understand the difference and the similarities of each plants. So the second plant is Kabomba. It is the second fastest growing plant in my tank. There are two varieties actually in my tank. One is green Kabomba and another one is the uh, red Kabomba. But the red Kabomba has only two stems in the tank and it is not doing very well because it is a high tech plant. So the red kabomba is still surviving in the tank, but the green kabomba is literally exploding everywhere and it's showing explosive growth. The next plant on the list would be rotala and I have a bunch of different varieties of rotala in the tank. Most of it is green rotala or rotala indica. It goes by the name of rotala indica or rotala rotundifolia, something like that and uh, it's a low tech plant it will grow nicely under high lights and high co2 but in my tank also it's doing pretty well considering it's a medium type of plant considering the difficulty 
but i do have pink rotala as well in the tank and uh, it's showing some pink coloration under the leaves okay so that one is also in there uh, the next one i would like to tell about is bacopa so i have green bacopa actually it's it has some other name also but commonly it's called as bacopa so there are two kinds in my tank of uh, two kinds of bacopa in my tank the first one is bacopa the, the normal one the green one and the second one is bacopa moneri i don't think i'm pronouncing it right but i'll put up the spelling on the screen so they are placed next to each other and both are i wouldn't say fast growing they are growing slowly but they are showing some promising growth and uh, healthy growth i would say so those are the two plants also uh, they are doing better i i once tried a co2 injection uh, experiment it was a diy system and it turned out well the plants also show uh, showed some nice growth but bocopa in uh, particular had shown most nice growth when the co2 was provided in the tank to the next plant it is a pennywort one of which is hold pennywort i don't know how to pronounce it it's really uh, complicated in terms of pronunciation but this uh, there are two types actually in the tank one is uh, round pennywort and the next one is brazilian pennywort so i'll show up the photos on the screen the one from the plants from my tank and a photo that i took from google so you can have a fair comparison and you will understand which plant is which one so another one in my tank is uh, yeah more about the pennywort they are i i think they are rather slow growing plants in my tank i don't know why they are easy uh, kind of easy plants considering the difficulties but in my tank they are slow growing i don't know why so yeah that was about the pennywort and the next one is amazon sword i have only a single plant of amazon sword and it's not doing good i don't know why before uh, before some months it was literally spreading everywhere like it was shooting off some new babies and all but now it just is not doing good i would say it's just thriving it's just surviving it's not growing at all but it's still there and the another one is cryptocorin so cryptocorin is a root feeder basically so it's getting all the nutrition so it's getting all the nutrition from the substrate layer and it's doing very nice it's growing it's uh, producing new babies from its roots and all i have i think i have cryptocorin parva the green and small variety and cryptocorin venditti brown these two kinds of cryptocorins i have in my tank so that is one and uh, uh, i think i have hygrophila polysperma yes hygrophila polysperma a little uh, dwarf variety is there a single plant i don't remember where i have planted it but it's still there and i have ludwigia i think it is ludwigia ovalis or ludwigia sunset i don't know but it's uh, getting that orange kind of color under the leaves and it, the next plant is a moss actually it's not a it's a plant kind of but uh, it's not a plant so i don't know how to put it it's it's uh, it goes by the name of peacock moss and all of the hardscape in the two feet tank is covered with peacock moss there are a little bit of java moss strands in there but it's hard to differentiate because both of them look really really similar just like cabomba and limnophila sessiliflora so both of the Uh, moss also looks similar almost java fern uh, java moss is a little bit thin compared to peacock moss so i'll put up the photos of these mosses also in the uh, video screen here so you can understand what i'm talking about and uh, that's all i don't think i missed any of those plants but uh, yeah that's all the uh, plants that i have in my tank but to make sure i'll uh, edit the while uh, posting this clip i'll make sure to put up a list of all the plants in my tank up on the screen here so you can see what plants are there in my tank i'll put up a list a total list so that's all about the plants now coming back to uh, one of the more interesting questions what lights am i using because 
many people see these kinds of explosive growth and they are confused to like what uh, light am I using? So honestly, it's a nine watt bulb that you use in your households. It's a LED bulb. I think this one is a Havel's brand, nine watts, 850 lumens, daylight spectrum. That's all. And it costs around uh, 150 rupees if you buy it from a retailer. So that's way, way cheaper than the price of aquarium lights. The lights that are sold under the name of aquarium and plant growing lights. Because if you check, Mm, last I checked, the cheapest light in India for growing aquarium plants was around 1,200 Indian rupees. So, okay, that's not very expensive. But considering if there is a beginner in this hobby and he wants to like start and has no uh, sources to invest such a amount of money in the hobby, he wants the hobby to be free. And mostly hobbies should be free. Hobbies should be free. You should not be investing your money in it you should be investing your time in it investing money is optional it should not be compulsory right so i don't know why these aquarium lights are so so expensive but okay coming back to our point this is a 9 watt bulb and it's a household bulb that you find in any electrical shop any electrical uh, retailer shop that will sell you the electronics of a household it costs 10% of the price of aquarium uh, plant growing lights. Okay, I'm not joking. I'll put up the photos of aquarium lights and their prices and comparatively the prices of these LED bulbs. Only the price will go up if you buy a higher watt of bulb, like 12 watts will cost you 180 or 15 watts will cost you around two, 215 rupees, something like that. So you can make the decision for yourself if this is cheap or this is expensive and you can compare the results look at this plant uh, plant growth in my tank it is because of a 9 watt led bulb and you can watch other videos on youtube where you see those uh, actual aquarium plant growth uh, lights that are cost uh, that are costly compared to an led bulb and the plant growth that they develop i agree there will be a slight difference Maybe a major difference like high tech plants will grow better under those lights. I agree, but come on, this is satisfactory. If it's not, tell me in the comments because I'm satisfied with this kind of growth. I'll show you a little bit overview of this plant because this is going to be taken down soon and I'm going to do a rescape of this tank also. So I don't know if you're not satisfied with this. I think this hobby is not for you, honestly, not for you. Okay. So that is all about lights and uh, the setup that I've done is just basically I took a, uh, you can say a waste kind of wooden strip that was lying around in my house waiting to be burned under some uh, firewood name. But I took it and I chopped it off to the length. I hammered some nails on the top there. I took some wiring. I put a hole here and I put a you say what's that a holder a bulb holder i connected the wiring and voila uh, light stand is ready so there's no magic in it you can do it any way that you want like diy do it yourself you can do it any way you want so it's not compulsory to do it just like this or just any other method that you see on youtube you can do it any way you want all right and uh, you can go for a higher wattage i have i've taken nine watts you can go for higher does not matter just make sure of having more plants in your tank because that is the only thing that will stop algae from growing all right so coming to the next point is uh, hardscape what hardscape do i have in my plant tank honestly very honestly it's just normal rocks that are used in constructions of roads around here or uh, uh, high boundary walls Okay, fence walls in India they use big stones. Uh, I think it's called basalt rock, B A S A L T, basalt rock, and uh, they are pretty hard. They don't leave uh, sediments in the water. They will not dissolve any sediments. It will not uh, leach any chemicals into the water. 
so it's safe to use and in this tank also there you can see a rock it's a basalt rock i i literally took it uh from a road nearby i'm not lying so it works fine and the algae growth on that rock is loved by shrimp literally loved by shrimp okay so that is about the rock what about the wood so here you see these woods i collected from a local lake uh it goes by the name of kas kas lake it's near my house and i visited there once i picked up this wood it was floating in the water i don't know for how long it was already uh you know all tannins were gone and there was it was water logged almost so i picked it up i brought home i brought it home i treated it with some salt and water and also some hot water for i think some 10 days in the salt water i kept it in salt water for 10 days and after that i used it to tie moss and put it in my aquarium the wood the drift wood from the 2 feet aquarium is a diy that i made it myself and it uh, was made using roots of my bougainvillea plant it was a huge bougainvillea plant uh, that i uprooted from my garden and it had nice root structures so i took it apart i took the roots i dried them i treated them uh, with salt water then i you know it's a long process to make diy driftwood i did all that for months it was lying in water for months then i used it as a uh, stick glued together the different pieces of roots and then i put it in my tank after attaching some moss on it so that's all hardscape there is so yeah the last thing and the very important thing of this hobby is the fish what fish do i have in my tanks now if you think about this tank i have neon tetras i think a school of six neon tetras almost and one female beta and a colony of shrimps i don't know how many shrimps are there but i put in only five shrimps but they have multiplied like crazy and ramson snails also so ramson snails also i don't know the count i put in only three of them but now they are all over the place so that those are the inhabitants of my one feet cube here uh, about my two feet tank i am not really sure about the count of my guppies because they breed like crazy so there are guppies i would say around 20 15 to 20 i'm not sure 15 to 20 guppies are there and uh, two black neons three black neon tetras are there and uh, one rainbow fish is there which was lying in the fish store and it was about to die because of uh, white spot disease it had white spot disease and it was about to die but i decided to bring it home uh, try to treat it so it i was successful in that so lucky me i put it in the two feet uh, aquarium and it's living its life happily ever after till now all right so that's the number of fish and also there is one beta the lucifer i named it lucifer because nobody ever suggested me a better name so if you have any better suggestions let me know we'll rename him but for now he's lucifer and he's enjoying his life in the two feet tank also there is one albino corridora i still have only one because i never found any other albino corridora in my local aquarium shops uh, the next one is uh, a pleco it's a local common pleco common plecostomus and uh, it's a small size i i would say around 2 and 1/2 inches it's there to do some clean up work because i don't put any shrimps in there why because once i tried i put uh, six shrimps in that tank and all of them were murdered by my beta i don't know lucifer just does not like the cherry shrimps i guess so i never put back any other shrimps i just put in the pleco and there are some snails in that in that tank also nothing else is in there and uh, yeah floating plants i had some floating plants a lot of them actually amazon frogbit was there uh, red root floaters were there and uh, i think salvinia is the name 
for that plant. It was also there in the tank, but I don't know uh, out of just just a whim, I took them all out. I put them in a uh, back backyard. I have a tub set up for breeding my guppies. So I put all my floating plants in those tubs. And unfortunately, they did not survive there. I don't know why. And I'm very, very regretting that decision. But I'm planning to buy some more floating plants in the future. Let's see. Maybe after escaping this tank, I will be buying some more uh, floating plants. So yeah, that's all about it. If you still have any other questions, please put it down in the comment box so I can answer it. Maybe in the comment section itself. But if there are a lot of questions, I may have to make any other video about it. I'm not still sure, but let's see. Uh, that's all about it. Hope you enjoyed it and hope I answered all of your questions. If you still have any, please let me know. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel because uh, when I checked in my YouTube studio, almost 97% of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel. So please don't do that. Please subscribe to the channel because that is going to help us grow and uh, that will be encouraging me to put out more videos more content about this hobby how to make it easier for everybody okay so please subscribe to the channel leave a comment if you want to say anything and give a like give a thumbs up to the vi uh, video if you liked it i'll see you in the next video till then bye bye take care